didn't get a chance to run through the timing on this, so hopefully I can do this in an expedient manner. Um, So you all have the um, account security policy change proposal that I submitted to Mr. Carey on January 14th. I just have a little bit about the why. I don't really go into the details that are already in the proposal here. Just to try and keep it uh, I see this as like the first steps at uh, creating a modern cybersecurity posture here for the school. Um, there's probably a lot more I could, I could do beyond this, but this is probably the most urgent step. Uh, the purpose that I wrote this um, proposal for and submitted it is um, to take that first step to start the conversation to try to keep us uh, up with the times. Uh, schools are being targeted by uh, hackers and uh, ransomware and other bad actors at an increasing rate, both nationally and uh, our neighbors, as we'll cover soon here. Um, some of these policies are probably long overdue, but it's better late than uh, than ever, or better late than before an incident occurs. Um, I'll very, be very happy to be the bad guy, to be public enemy number one, and tell people they have to change their passwords. Um, I'm not a policy writer. Uh, I think um, a lot of these ideas probably ought to be examined maybe by a district technology committee meeting again. We haven't had one of those in a while, but. Um, I mean, these aren't the end all be all set in stone. I would very much welcome a lot of opinions on these. And um, yeah, this is just focusing on probably the most important immediate step, uh, passwords and password security, but there's a lot more to discuss about this. Uh, the background is that security is everybody's job. Uh, just like for physical security, we're all wearing name badges and the, uh, the expectation is if you see somebody walking around without a name badge that you uh, incite the, the security response, whether that's to talk to the person, bring them to the nearest office to get checked in, signed in, or just to talk to an authority um, and let them know, hey, this person's wandering around without checking in yet. Well, that's everybody's physical security job. Uh, digital security is just as important because when we give accounts, we give passwords and accounts can be used uh, to either access the data that they're privileged to or they could be used to access somebody who has an account with privilege, access to privileged data, like an impersonation attack. I'll talk about that in just a little bit. Um, I mentioned schools are targets. The two I wanted to point out were that uh, the San Diego School District last month had um, reported they lost control of about 500,000 student records over a two-year uh, attack. They didn't um, realize that the attackers had gotten in until uh, two years after the incident happened. And um, general response time to an incident uh, is about 200 days. So it's, you know, a lot of times people don't understand that they've been compromised till much, much later. So two years might seem like a lot, and 500,000 is definitely a lot of students. Um, but uh, 200 days is pretty much the average response time um, before a school or, or a victim is, realizes that they were compromised. The uh, closer to home examples would be Colgate and Proctor. Both uh, in the last few years have been hit with uh, ransomware attacks, which will encrypt the files on a computer and hold them ransom, give you three or six days to pay up a ransom in, in Bitcoin, or the file will delete the, the decryption key and your files are gone forever, unless some other cybersecurity research has a copy of that key and can help you out. Um, I do know that the uh, uh, the Colgate paper said that their second cyber attack uh, that happened over the summer of I believe 17 after the first one in 16, um, they didn't pay on either attack. They resolved the situations themselves, but the second one they did have to pay the $15,000 cybersecurity insurance deductible. Um, this slide is a general slide of the average cost of data breaches in the U.S. Now this is not specific to schools. This is talking about you know, Fortune 500 companies and stuff. This is from Forbes though. Um, I couldn't imagine that uh, 7.91 million. I don't know what figures go into that, but I'm sure there's lost profits and industry, industrial secrets and stuff that they get out. And uh, Not all those would be applicable to a school, but there are a lot of costs, uh, both in um, work hours and in cash. So I'm focusing on a few things today. We've got three things that this policy um, begins to address. Uh, weak, easily guessed passwords. Uh, you know, we'll address this list in a moment here. Uh, password age, and then our general password security posture, which is a term 
Uh, basically, you know, they could say security hygiene or just the habits and training that we provide for all of our staff members. Um, these are focused on three accounts, but a lot of people have more than these three accounts. But the computer accounts to get on the computers and the internet, their email accounts, and then Power School, where all the student information is. That's that's a big one right there. So real briefly, as best as I can, I'm already five minutes in here. Weak passwords, yeah. So these are the top 100 passwords according to some uh, slash data um, data firm from 2017. And this list doesn't change all that much throughout the years, especially the, like the top 10 or 20. Um, I already heard some people mention that they've had similar passwords. And hopefully, if you have any of these passwords on this list now, uh, that you change them. There are some vulgar passwords that doesn't really make it any harder to guess. Um, Interestingly, I don't know if Joshua is, is purposefully misspelled in this list or if it's accidentally. I imagine it was probably uh, more commonly spelled as it should be. Um, this list, this top 100, is a password dictionary. Uh, it's just like a word dictionary. It has a list of, of words. Uh, there are password dictionaries with billions of passwords, known passwords that people have actually used that have been recovered from data dumps. And attackers use these dictionaries, and with their software, if they have uh, an opportunity where they can get at a password hash dump, which is basically the encrypted listing of a user's passwords, like say from a company, uh, if we had a password hash dump, it would be everybody's passwords, but it would be encrypted, not in plain text. But if they had that offsite with not very expensive computers, $2,000 computers, $3,000 computers, they can attack that at the order of ten, tens of billions per second. So, you know, this isn't somebody just typing in one, two, three, four, five, six and hitting enter. Oh, that's not it, typing in password and hitting enter. Um, if an uh, attacker has an opportunity, we're talking tens of billions per second. But that's what computers do, they're made to be really fast. <laughs> the second part, password age, uh, just some statistics here. Um, I could run this against our computer accounts. Uh, Google doesn't let me run it. Uh, I can check for individual people, but not mass run, and I don't know how to check this in PowerSchool. But we have uh, 246 accounts, um, some active, some disabled. This, this doesn't differentiate between them, whose passwords on the computer were last set between 2000 and 2009. Um, of the 50 oldest ones on that list, and I just went down the first 50, 15 are still active employees, and some of them were administrators. So I should mention, at least one person I know, unfortunately, I know their password. I haven't been here that long. <laughs> one person, I, unfortunately, I know their password, and it's on this list, too, and, and uh, I've tried to help them change that. Wasn't me. Um, no, it wasn't you, no. Thanks. Uh, and then we've got uh, 20, almost 2,400 accounts um, that have changed their passwords between 2010 and the present. Uh, these are mostly student accounts or active staff members. Like I said, this doesn't just differentiate between if these accounts are disabled and when somebody leaves, we disable the account so that there's no access. But just to give you an idea of our, um, our threat landscape just on these computer accounts themselves. And then lastly, the policy addresses the general security password or hygiene. Um, I hear this a lot, you know, why are passwords so hard to deal with? They want me to have an uppercase, a lowercase, a number, a symbol. Um, I can't use my real name, I can't use the name of the website I'm on, I can't use the last password I use, and I got, you know, it takes me three months to figure it out, and then the next time I log in, they tell me I have to change it. <laughs> so, um, what does that get us? This is my joke, that gets us sticky notes. This was a picture from an interview of the uh, uh, Hawaiian Emergency Management Agency after in January 2018 when they had that false missile alert. They had interviewed people in there, and this person allowed them to take a picture where they have a password, take wow. picture of the monitor. So um, it happens. It's not just a joke. Uh, so the industry kind of read this. You know, like we needed to have passwords that are harder, harder to guess. Ended up having passwords that are hard to remember, but easy for a computer to guess. Uh, NIST is the National Institute of Standards of Tech. I've used their recommendations for 2016. I've kind of had to modify some of them that make them more feasible to our environment. Um, uh, that information is also in this booklet, so we'll kind of go by here. And then the proposed uh, password recommendations are just part of a greater set of IP policies. Um, I would like to see and I would like to help develop um, staff training. Uh, I have one slide here about password managers. Um, but other cybersecurity training, like phishing and social engineering training, um, to something as simple as locking <coughs> your computer screen when you 
get up to take your kids to uh, the gym class or something. Um, limiting the sharing of files, especially as we move to Google Drive and have the ability to share files publicly. Other parts like empowering users to be part, you know, feel part of the security team. Having um, uh, regular audits to make sure that we're keeping up with uh, uh, requirements, both federal or maybe uh, insurance requirements to make sure that we're staying compliant with our policy. So this is just the first of it. Um, the last thing I really wanted to mention, 10 minutes in here already, uh, a password manager. If you're not familiar, it's, it's just a, a database of your passwords. And I was going to print off mine, but that's not really secure to have a list of all the sites I have. So I put it this way. My password database has, I started off, I had 56 passwords that CW Technology handed off to me when I came into my position here. Uh, I don't even have all of those in my password manager and I have exactly 100 passwords in accounts right now. There's no way I can remember them. Now they're all, since I don't have to remember them because they're in this database, in this software on my computer and I could just double click to copy them and paste them in. I don't have to remember them so they can be 20 to 30 characters that are just random strings of those numbers, letters, and symbols that they want us to do, but I don't have to memorize them. Um, password managers, I'm not really saying we have to do in this because it's gonna be a lot of training to get people used to it, but it is a tool that uh, is probably one of the best things that we could recommend to anybody to keep their passwords safer and to help generate stronger passwords. And then the last bullet point on this is that Mr. Brosen and Mr. Carrier were given instructions when I started and created this database. So if I get hit by a bus or if my employment gets terminated, there's ac they have access to all of those accounts and passwords and they don't have to go through the trouble of uh, recovering that. And then personally, I have my own personal one. It doesn't have 100 accounts on it yet, but I have my own personal database and I have, uh, I give copies to my mother in case, you know, anything, God forbid, ever happens to me, she'd have access to my stuff too. So it, it provides the utility as well as the security. Don't you have to change the passwords? On some sites I do, and it can be a pain because I have to go in and type in this, or copy and paste in the original 30 to 20, 20, 30 character password and then use the password manager to generate another random string and then paste that in and make sure to save it and then save my backup of it and then get that backup copy to my mother in this case or uh, in the work case it was uh, stored on our network drive so there, the most recent copy is always available there. So I had a lot to say in conclusion. Um, just want to reiterate, this is just some ideas to get the conversation started. I'm not saying I'm a, a policy writer. I don't want to overstep on anybody's authority to write policy. Um, I'm pretty sure you know a good legal policy probably should have you know the considerations of our um, cybersecurity insurance in mind and maybe legal. I don't know. That's part of the, the thing that I'm not all that well versed on. But I'm very happy to help. This is kind of a new passion for me, a kind of a speciality in my IT career. And um, I follow a lot of InfoSec experts on Twitter. I watch dozens, probably hundreds of hours of um, conference talks from TED Talks to even DEF CON, the hacker conference in Las, Las Vegas every year on YouTube and kind of see how people on either side of the fence, the good guys or the bad guys, interact. Um, and I uh, certainly would offer whatever help I can to whatever committee or whatever group decides if we're going to adopt some of these policy changes and make our passwords a little bit more secure. So uh, thanks for your time. I only took about 13 and a half minutes of it. I do have more <laughs> slides with some specifics of the policy in here, and I'll be happy to answer any of these questions. I say go for it. Go for what? Changing the passwords and, and doing, a, doing a policy like this. Did you check to see if MSB has any model policies particular to this? I have not, no. That would be we'll, something. MSB? Uh, the MSB? School Board Association. Association. They've oh, got okay. a list not of policies. No, the, although um, I will add a few things that, because um, I just rattled through a lot of this and I didn't have all that much time to prepare. I did look to, on the neighboring schools' websites to see if they had similar policies to help model off of. And if they do, they're not advertising them on the website, which is probably fine because if you tell somebody that, hey, our passwords are all in this format, you're basically telling them how to narrow down their tech search. Um, but I meet every month with the technology users group that's hosted by ARC in Hermantown. Pardon me, all the area school um, tech directors or IT people are there and um, the security aspect is 
been the top of the top of the town for the entire year so far. And even last year we had uh, some some trainers and some vendors come in to see what they offer and stuff. Um, but yeah, I would definitely think that if there are some model policies out there that we could uh, compare what I just came up with in my draft here, that would be very useful because I don't purport to know everything. What I did put in here though are all low cost or no cost um, solutions. Um, being a school, I know that that's important. The, the only potential cost other than the time <coughs> to actually reset people's passwords or help them out would be the part where there's um, multi-factor authentication, which is when you log into an account, you have to have something you know, which is your password, and then something you have, which is a physical security token. Now that could be the Google Authenticator app, where we could push out on people's iPads. Um, side note, I'm trying to prepare iPads for everybody on the board here, so you'll get those soon. Uh, or, um, if I may, they have uh, physical security keys called UV keys, that I, this is my personal one, that it requires you to plug this into the computer and tap the button. So I have to have the password, which I know, and something which I have. And with all those two things, an attacker can get into my accounts. But like I said, for most people, the Google Authenticator app is free. We can push it to their iPad. So the solutions are quick to implement and cheap, if not free, for all of these. I try to keep that in mind. So I guess I didn't have one question. So would the kids have to have like a 10 character password? That would prove really difficult. Uh, I do know after speaking with uh, Paula Madden when she deals with a lot of the younger kids, especially last year up at the Franklin with those kids, you know, they're just being introduced the idea of having passwords and they're not very good touch typists. And by the time they get the first few letters of their password typed in, the screen's already blinking back to the welcome screen. So uh, student accounts, they're limited to um, getting onto the computers, their H drive, and then uh, their email if they happen to um, use the same password. Um, Google requires an eight character minimum, so at the very least, they already have one of those, but they only type it into their iPad once and then it remembers it, so that might not be any or you know, more or less easy for a student to remember. But this was more for the um, bend of staff and administration who have access to PowerSchool or email um, to uh, protect like that, you know, federally protected information that FERPA and HIPAA require us to protect. So I have a question on my email, school email. Once a week, if not twice a week, I have to continuously log in. You know, I mean, I don't, I just, you know, I mean, I have to log in. What, I just want, you want a laptop or a phone or a tablet, tablet or a tablet, home computer? Tablet. And do you typically carry that to different networks no, with no, you? No, it saves my house. Okay. Um, there might be the cookie settings because what Google does is when you log in, if you set it to remember the login, mm -hmm. it'll create a cookie on your computer that says, okay, this is Bill Addy's computer. Mm -hmm. He's set to log in. And if you were to log in on a different computer that Google doesn't recognize right. and doesn't have that cookie, it should challenge you. But if your computer or tablet is set to make cookies on a shorter notice than typical 30 or 90 days, um, then Google would see that cookie, wouldn't know that that's you, and okay. see the login. Well, maybe I'll bring my tablet and take a look at it. Yeah. Because it's just like for once, maybe once a week, twice a week sometimes, sometimes it's, you know, once every two weeks, I have to I, I go to my school email. I mean, I go into it, mm -hmm. almost, I try to get there every day. But when I go to log in, it says, you know, password acquired, and then you have to, you know, put your password in. Yeah, and, and Google is, pretty on top of monitoring for strange logins and stuff. Mm -hmm. And if uh, I've seen now where people's email addresses have appeared in uh, breach lists online. Mm -hmm. uh, just last month, there was a big one called collection number one. And we had about five email addresses that were on there. And Google forced them to reset all of their passwords. And um, before, before I even responded to that, so. Google's pretty good at uh, maintaining your Gmail security. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the policies that um, that I recommend for our computer accounts and PowerSchool kind of mirror what Google requires with at least the eight character yeah. minimum. Policy, I do, I do say I'd rather have 10 characters than eight for the computer account. Um, the NIST recommendations on here say eight, but they also rely on you being able to follow all the recommendations, and there's a few that are infeasible to us with our current systems. Um, 
So in order to compensate for that, I said I would recommend at least 10. Personally, I think 12, but uh, I know you can't do too much too fast with a lot of people. Um, I'm willing to be the bad guy, but I don't want to be the bad bad of a guy. Um, and then there's also some consideration in here for future revisions if we get new technology that allows us to um, do more of what NIST recommends we do. Um, for instance, they recommend having a, a checking every password that somebody would set against a dictionary more than 100. It would be probably, you know, maybe a million passwords, top million used passwords. And if that appears on that list, to not allow that. Well, our current infrastructure doesn't have the tools to do that without spending a lot of money. So um, my recommendations are kind of trying to balance the ease of use and what we have available with security, but there's recommendations for future review as we get more technology and as the threat landscape changes. Anyone else have any questions for <clears throat> Next steps? Yeah, I'll be very happy to participate in uh, any other groups or meetings. The District Technology Committee, if we can get that reorganized and together, I think there's a lot of good that that group could do, including looking at this and getting a teacher's perspective and uh, um, I can't do this alone. Like I said, I don't know how to write the policy officially, so it'd have to be somebody uh, to help me out with, but I'm willing to make myself available. And I don't think I took up too much time. You did great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. <coughs> Moving along to it, uh, the admin, the, be the administrative structure. Um, I know that in the past I've had discussions with a board member in regards to Mr. Carey's uh, presence at the Franklin and discussed that maybe if we get Mr. Carey back down to the, his office here versus having, you have an office up there, right, Jeff? Yep. Okay, and what was the pur purpose for that? I guess, I mean, I guess I don't know what. Uh, when we Can you feel, well, just fill me in on how this trans how this transpired. When the original uh, move was made, part of the concern that the Franklin teachers had, what they voiced to the board at that time, was they didn't they didn't want a situation where there wasn't somebody available for them to talk to when they needed to. So I I originally started it. I didn't have any help up there. And then uh, for the last year now, I've had a dean of students here as well. So it's become better in that regard. But, and I think that a lot of the fears that that, that staff may have had at, at the time of that change with the dean of students has kind of subsided now. I mean, they're getting more comfortable with it. So. So do you feel that, I mean, do you feel that your presence would be better down here in the, in the high school versus up there since we have a dean of students? Up there? And then being that Angie has had a little bit of her duties lifted and Grip has it, well, he's over in the Gilbert campus, but he's had his duties lifted because of the athletic director that we have now that it would be best to maybe give her just some of those duties up at Franklin? I've always been a supporter of trying to get you to just be doing one job, just, just focusing on the superintendent job and being down here and doing that, because we've had enough to fill your plate for, for superintendent duties. You know, with everything we've got up going on with with the collaboration and just the daily runnings of the school district, I think I, I've always said that I think that that's important. Um, you know, and and I've always I've also always said that I think that we should look at a a different option for um, 
principal for up at the elementary school for that purpose, just so that your primary focus is on superintendent duties. <clears throat> what kind of option do you want to look at? I mean, I'm not arguing with you. I mean, I, I don't have time to be doing that. I, you know, and I, but I am. I don't want to say that, uh, you know, I wouldn't want to say, um, I've got an idea, but whether or not that that's even a feasible option. We'll throw it out um, there. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think that being that Angie is on this campus, it seems to make more sense to me that Angie would be the one that would be the acting principal for the elementary school. Because my understanding is if you kept the dean of students, if we kept the dean of students, they can be up there dealing with kid issues and, and behavioral problems and whatever up at the Franklin. And if there's any kind of staff, because my understanding is that um, the one thing that a dean of students cannot do is discipline any staff or have any kind of supervision over staff. So Correct. my thought is if any of that is needed, Angie could be that person instead of having you be that person. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're not going to find any argument for me that I shouldn't be doing it. I mean, I, I agree with you now. However, I don't know that Angie's the answer either. I mean, and I can't speak for her because she's not here right now, but that's, she'd be in the same boat as I am, ripping her hair all the time. I mean, I, mean, I, just, I don't, I, like I, I said, don't know I if didn't, you want to do that. I don't know if that's feasible, and I, I would like her input on that too, um, because I don't know everything she does in a day, so I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know. But yeah. if that's not an option <clears throat> because she's got enough on her plate, because she was not doing the community ed piece. Todd was oh, doing Todd's the doing community ed piece. Yeah. So um, if that's not a feasible option to have Angie that I mean, I, I've, that talk, I've talked to her about Franklin. it, and I, I don't think she'd be opposed to trying it, but I'm just telling her. That. I mean, what do I do up there? I, I do all the evaluations, and I do all the staff development, the Wednesdays, for the most part. I mean, I, I'm the one that... So what's the... Crafts what we do on Wednesdays and, and pull it off. I mean, so it's, how often are you doing the evaluation? The evaluation part? Well, I mean, it's... The actual evaluation is not... I don't know if I can put a time on, time on that. But one of the big things is I... Just to, for instance, right now we're... One of our Wednesday efforts right now is to, uh, for years and years, hey John. Hi, I'm sorry. No, you're fine. You're all right. That's part of my fault. Um, just to make sure that uh, the Riggs program, the phonograms, is being taught throughout. We've had a lot of staff turnover up there in the last 10 years. And it isn't being carried through all the way up up all the way up to fourth grade, so that, that's one of the big things that, and that that has been a big time consumer, time consuming issue for me, because that one, that particular one falls on me. I've had some help from other teachers up there, veteran teachers, but it's just, you know, there's lots of non-tenured staff out there, you know. I just, I just see it as this, you know, Jeff, we need you well, as your superintendent. Not, I mean, not arguing with you one bit about that. You know, we got, we got some big decisions that's got to, you know, that may be coming up and we need you full bore on to stay focused on where, not stay focused, but we just need you to stay focused on what's coming up with the Virginia school board and stuff like that. I mean, you know, we need you there. I mean, Angie, in the meeting where we hired a, the uh, athletic director, Angie, stated that in GRIP, I think you two had said you freed up about 15% of your time, that you're not bo booking buses, you're not doing the athletic part that you would normally do. And I, I really didn't know much. We okay. left it with the AD okay. in, my per in my spot. Um, the community head piece, um, she has taken some of the responsibility off. But um, quite honestly, the early childhood program and Myself, I, I don't 
feel like there's been too much lifted off of okay. the spot. But, Fair enough. but you're over in the Gilbert campus, so, correct. you know. I could drive over here. Well. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, that's how I feel that, you know. Um, I mean, if, you, if you want my recommendation, I'd hire somebody else. A principal? Just suck it up for a couple of years while we make this transition. And just do it. A principal and get rid of the dean position, or? Why can't we have Because Andrew? I don't know. I, if you can try it, principal. but I'm, I don't I'm just saying I don't think it's going to work. I mean, I don't feel that's a good business decision to hire a superintendent for what? How many kids up there? I, know. I mean, a superintendent. I mean, a principal. A principal. It's not. But that might be our only viable option right now. Okay. No, you're right. It's not a good business. That's why we no. went away from it in the first place. Because it's not a good business. I mean, she doesn't have to have a pre does she? I mean, if you got a dean of students up there, I mean, the dean of students would take care of the, the student part of it. But if there's a staff issue, that's when Angie would step in. I mean, she doesn't have to be up there every day, just as needed. You know. <clears throat> Again. I mean, you're. I mean, you're I the. Hmm? Sorry. That's right. Do you want? Go ahead. I, I don't. I don't want to just, I would want her to have input in, into mm -hmm. it because, you know, we don't know what they do in a day and, um, you know, I, I would just want her input mm -hmm. into that decision. And, and on another mm -hmm. note, I mean, we're almost through February already. We have March, mm -hmm. April, May, June, you know, a few days in June, right? Is it, no. is it, I mean, are we talking the start of next year we're doing something different? Are we talking now? Because I don't know, I would again want staff input on that as well because I don't know if it's in the best interest of the the kids and the staff to just make that change right now. Right. I, I want their I input on that as well. No, I would, I'd definitely do it this summer if you're going to do something. Are, are, are there any standards, I mean, from the school board, I mean, just trying to get a feel for I mean, what a typical administrator's load is, or typical principal's load, I should say, as far as the number of, of students they're under, the number of staff they're under, I mean, are there... Uh, Job duties. Uh, yeah, are there because administrative numbers as far as what... They usually... In, I'm pulling this out of the air. I couldn't come up with something to back it up if I wanted to. But the number that I've heard is about 500 students per principal. That's I think mean, give or take, I mean, there's schools out there with, you know, 200 kids in it with the principal. Well, I mean, there's so nothing you can do about 800 kids. Sure. But yeah, and, but yeah. I think spots you're asking about, like, job duties. And yeah. if the, is that what you're asking? Is, like, the job duties and how much time those job duties take them during the day to fill their time? Mm -hmm. Like accountability. Right, yeah. I mean, what, what's a typical load for, and there's, I know... There's, there's no mean, answer to that. I mean, some days, I would imagine Todd walks in and there's a problem coming off the bus and he, that lasts the whole day. <laughs> in other days, oh, well, in other sure, days no, there's I, nothing. I, mean, I, I understand that, yeah. but there's... I mean, every school has principals and administrators. And I, and think, that, I think there's a lot of similarities in each principal's role. But a lot of differences too. I think it's you all know. over the board, depending upon the district. Really. It's all over the board. It's just all in, over just the board. in our district. I mean, the yeah. three of us have completely different jobs. I mean, yeah. I mean, take St. Louis County. They've got traveling, and they're they're all over here and there, and they're sharing St. Louis County schools. Yeah. So I mean, it, I that's yeah, all over. There's the board. I, I I agree that I think that we need to do something different for for next year. Well, let's do it. Beginning yeah. of the, beginning of the year we need to figure out what we're going to do differently if we're going to you know talk to um the current high school principal to see if that's something that can be taken on and looking at how much time that jeff is actually spending in that role and see if if she's able to do that and if she's not then we need to look at other options but i would like to see that happen starting in the fall first you know in August make that transition yeah. and I agree that I think any changes should be made the next school year you know like policies job descriptions changes and I think that's 
you just hold on until the end, and then you make your new policies. But can I? Can you tell me specifically when JoJo came on, what did she um, absorb from yours, Todd, and then <coughs> Angie's? So I get it straight. Well, one of the big two things. I mean, one hasn't really materialized, and that's yet, and that's community ed. And the problem with community ed being a large part of what Todd's responsibility with that fell through early childhood, and, and being that he is over there, it probably makes sense that he keeps the early childhood stuff. So you're still running the early childhood responsibilities early childhood. now? Yeah. E C F E and S E? Yes, all of them. F E and S E. Okay. Um, but the other big one is the supervision of all of those people, coaches. And Todd different. still does? No, Angie was doing that. Oh, Angie, She's not that, doing that, no. that was Angie, okay. Supervise um, coaches and all extracurricular? Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's it. Yeah. Okay. But I think, I think the discussion at, when she was first hired, the discussion was that <clears throat> um, the community ed piece wasn't going to be thrown at her right away because she no. needed to get, we've, we've, get in and. We've put some of it that way. I mean, she make has. Make some routines herself. She has some of it, I mean, because some of it Denise had too, so I mean, that stuff has been moved over to her now, like the facility scheduling and whatnot. So she's doing some of Denise's mm -hmm. previous stuff too? Yeah, Denise took on some of the stuff that, well, one of the stuff, stuff that you were doing. Mm -hmm. All the free and reduced lunch stuff that she was doing went down there. <clears throat> We'll, uh, Any more discussion on it? Or? No, I agree. Go ahead. I mean, we make a change. Yeah. I'll be doing backflips down all of them. It's, it's more than one person can do. That's more than I think she, Angie can do. Well, then if that's, if that's the case, then we're going to need to discuss what we want to do. Do we want to keep the dean of students or hire a principal? I think, hire, I think if we were to hire a principal, um, if Angie doesn't accept, if if, because like he's saying, well, you, you can. She doesn't have to accept. We can tell her, hey, you're doing this. Yeah, so okay. manager, right? But but it's just a matter of. But the I right want to retain staff too. We've been right, sitting here right. talking forever about mm -hmm. turnover, so I'd like to retain staff. She's got years of experience. Yes. But besides that, um, <clears throat> you know, if, if if he's saying it's. That role, there's a lot to do in that role, and it's not a full-time job. I mean, that's the problem. That's why we got went away from it. I mean, it really isn't a full-time job. However, it's not a half-time job either. So, I mean, that, that's I mean, the problem. What's the percentage of time you dedicate to that position? It depends on the day. I mean, if I had to do it overall, I'd... so it'd be like zero, one percent one day, and then the next day it's. There's some days I never go up there. Okay. There's uh, some days I spend my whole day there. I mean, I just, I'd, I'd probably put it at a 40% but if you had to. But also, I mean, are the teachers taking taking that load? I mean, are they trying more to handle situations or? Um, no, the student stuff, the student, the student the stuff is all taken care of with the teachers. Teacher. That, that part of it's fine. Um, it's well, really the supervision of in particular, the, the non tenured staff and the staff development part, getting that going. Because we just, and there's another case where if we were a QCOM school, I mean, that, that wouldn't be an issue either because they were also taking care of that too. We are so. I was going to say, I think that <clears throat> it brings up a broader question because now you said that, that some of Denise's, we've had some change of duties and change of job descriptions, mm -hmm. and I think for everybody, and we never did have a job description or a percentage designated for you as principal and you as superintendent. Mm -hmm. And you can do it either way, you know, MSBA, and then, you know, get, getting uh, refreshed here, is that you, could, you could, can and should do it one or, or two ways, specifically a percentage of each job or um, or, or the duties spelled out, and we don't have a job description for you. So maybe we should start there with him and the principals, 
and um, anything that's been changed, like Denise, we've rearranged all these job descriptions from the office to the confidential. And I guess I was thinking about this before and I was going to suggest it, that we see actually, do they actually do what's in their job description? Or don't they do what's in their job description? Does somebody else do it? And so if that means looking at those job descriptions would, again, and what's actually going on, I think that's a good place to start. And that would include whatever we're going to do with the superintendent or the principal in the, you know, in the future, full-time superintendent or part-time superintendent principal. And a whole bunch of that is hinged on what happens in the next month, too. I mean, it might be phasing me right out of here. Um, I mean, that happens, too. Yeah. But, yeah, we can do that. Well, just so it's on the, you know, yep. something that we address for the fall, make sure it's... Like when I agreed to do it, I mean, it was only supposed to last a year, so, and I'm your five input, so... Yeah. <laughs> Oh. Would that be something that would come up in the budget discussions? Part of it, I well, should, if you, imagine. Well, depending on what direction you go, yeah. Personnel, for sure. Mm -hmm. And we're, I mean, we're deep into that right now. I mean, we're registering kids and figuring out how many people we need, so we can go right with it. Then that would give us a chance to do... Um, Kind of a study of what other school districts in the area do and you're talking about load and time and responsibilities we can make some kind of comparisons yeah and we we certainly did and it's just we're in a unique situation where we have none of the three buildings have we don't have 500 kids in any of them i, mean, them, but I guess this building you know, I think that's the norm around this area, <laughs> rather than the exception. No, Virginia's not that way. Wasabi East is not that way. I mean, they have an elementary and a secondary. Each of them has about 500 kids in it, less than 450. All right. All right. Okay. Move along to see collaborative update. What do you got? What do I got? Yeah. I put that on there as a filler in case we had too much time. I had uh, I had a chunk in my administrative report that I can share with you right now to make some time off that thing. I know that uh, on this collaborative update, I know that there's, or I just know that attending these meetings that, you know, we talk about this academy, we talk about possibly where it's going to be, and we talk about the fact that there's only a few places to build and we talk about our, our aging buildings such as this and the one in Gilbert but let's not wander too far from you know let's not wander too far from how we how we got to this point I mean it's all based on transportation I was thinking about that though today I, mm -hmm. I, I was thinking about that today um, my thought is it's evolved into something bigger and better. Absolutely, I agree. And uh, just because it's not, um, you know, totally focused on transportation and sharing administration, now mm -hmm. I think we're, I think we're on to something bigger and better, and mm -hmm. something that people are really excited about. And um, I want to keep that momentum going. Do you feel that? Do you feel that this building? I mean, do you think we can have all of that, the bigger and better and the transportation all grouped into one? Because the kind of things are kind of, you know, comments are made. I mean, we're talking about, just for example, not example, just because, you know, Parkview's not going nowhere. Roosevelt's in the midst of being possibly torn down and remodeled. Um, our district, we don't know what we're going to do. You don't know what we're going to do. You know, excuse me, but I think we're getting a little off topic. I think that's on the agenda for the regular meeting, but it's not really an update, I guess. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. it's not really an update. I guess we're talking about right now about well, I mean, ideas and things. Okay, but we have to have, I mean, I guess we as a board have to figure out what we're going to do with our elementaries and when would we, when would we just ever discuss that? Where do we want to go with our elementaries or where do we even want to go with... Uh, putting our input, it seems like it's, you know, 
it just seems like when you look at when I asked Jeff about this, which I got from Tom, this was all printed. This was all done by Jeff. I had no input on this. So we got we got a, a piece of official district school district email. I mean email. Or we got official school district business in a piece of paper that we had no that the boards had no our board had no input on. Okay, and Jeff, you no, did not know no. about this, did you? I knew we, about it, but I didn't. I didn't write it. Okay, <laughs> but I'm just I'm just saying that I mean it just seems that we need Jeff to take a role in this and because it I seems mean, like Noel's running the ship. No, he's no, not at all. Well, it just kind of seems like a little bit. So you said Noel wrote it. You wrote that. Who okay. authorized it to be put in the paper? There's been a lot of decisions made that we don't know about. You know, it's right. from the, I don't, from the beginning I don't, of this. I mean, I'm brand you new. Know. Run. I mean, excuse I me, Tom. <laughs> I think the more information we can put out there, I mean, mm -hmm. is it factual information? I mean, is it is it information that says what's been going on? Is it a collaboration update? Is it, it's not is totally it fact factual. finding? I didn't see it and didn't read it, but it's if, not it's, totally if it's information that pertains to what we have been talking about in this situation, I think the more information we get out there, the better. I, I, I mean, the other thing, though, too, is, um, you know, I wasn't able to attend the collaboration um, meeting this past Tuesday, so I've been looking to find a way to view it online, and I did figure it out, but it took a little bit of a process to do that, and it, it, in order to, I do agree in some, in some ways, we have to take more um, of a ownership in in making information available to our residents too. Mm -hmm. And Jeff showed me something before uh, we came into the meeting that he had gotten going on online. Um, still needs to be tweaked a little bit, but it was great information. It's exactly what we need to be putting out there for people to, to, um, to get the information mm -hmm. about what we've been talking about. Um, so I mean, kudos to him for doing that, but we need to we need to get that information out. I think, and and I, I I don't get upset about these kinds of things that are going out. That are I mean, yes, we should have more input into mm -hmm. in into these things, but we want people to be informed. And, and most of that information, I think, that's directly from that informational packet that was passed out, and I haven't compared the two of them, but at the, mm -hmm. the, the meetings last week, and I know when, when we got that information, you know, Jeff told those of us that were in Gilbert <laughs> that it wasn't going to be in the paper or a, a form of that. So, I mean, I, I wasn't surprised to see it. And I didn't, I skimmed through it, and it all looked like it was very similar to the information that was being passed out to the folks who came to the informational meetings. And I thought the same thing. I mean, when I read that in the paper this weekend, I thought it, it compared very similarly with mm -hmm. the stuff that was presented on Tuesday. I mean, I just saw it just though. I just glanced through it. I didn't quite yeah. I was made aware of it. That this was but it's not paper. totally accurate, and that's the problem I have no. when I read it. It's not totally accurate. And it wasn't <laughs> authorized, and Jeff no. didn't even know. He said he didn't know who authorized it either. And it could be opinionated too. Just one sided like story. Just, I don't want to make mountains out of molehills, that's all. But accurate information isn't a molehill. Could, could I ask what, what was inaccurate in your opinion on that? Or? Well, some of the, um, I don't have it in front of me, but what I remember some of the figures about what it would cost for repairs, they lumped a lot, uh, um, they lumped both districts, all three districts, into one category. It wasn't. It wasn't like the whole story. Yeah. And um, I, I can go through it at a later date. I'd be happy to tell you what I thought wasn't accurate. Yeah, and then I thought I thought that the, the repairs would maybe just a general number or just something that uh, I mean, because they don't. They're not gonna put a full breakdown of what they are yeah. gonna get for that. And I just thought. No, but when you say and Eveleth Gilbert is the same, you know, Virginia's got a great big a large amount of money for repairs and Evelyn Gilbert is the same and it's not the same yeah. it gives the wrong impression to the to the um, tech taxpayers and citizens one example so to answer some of your question <laughs> um, 
so tomorrow we have we're going to finish up the listening sessions tomorrow or Virginia and then the, the game plan was on the 25th we're going to meet to present that information to you guys so that you can talk about your elementary options we're hoping to have some type of survey results back to them or there's no way of scientifically surveying the public at this point but think of it just an I mean, informal <coughs> poll or something online I mean, it's just the way that, I mean, we can talk about this at the regular meeting, but I mean, I'm just, the fact that, you know, we're going to build this brand new building and then we're going to, you know, build, Evelsville, we're going to build a new campus somewhere. I mean, if we were going to build a brand new high school, I think it'd be in the best interest of Evelsville School District that we would put our building on that same campus as a high school. And that's fine. I mean, that's, you know, to alleviate the that's to what, alleviate the transportation issue that's already plaguing us. That would certainly be you an know, option. You know, or I mean, I just think that if we, you know, we need we need the we need the two districts to be all in. You know, what I'm saying all in. I mean, even if you had to take Evelyn and Gilbert and in Virginia, and you put a you know a a, a pre K through three in one building, and then the high school, and then a Four through six, and another building, everything on the same campus. I mean, that would it just be that would be ideal, but that doesn't seem to be the consensus. I think one of the with the Virginia board, that you know, to the fact that there's this thing about having this school downtown in Parkview. I mean, I mean, I understand it's a new building. I get that, but it, why would you not want to build that near the high school if you if you if the land. Is, is available or the land allows it. I mean, I don't want to see, they keep bringing up this tiny postage stamp piece of property and it's like, it's not very big. You can't expand on it. You know, you know, we've had this conversation. You know the property I'm talking about. I mean, it's a postage stamp. It'd be like, you know, sleep, like sleeping on an ironing board for crying out loud. I mean, it's tiny, you, you can't spread your wings. I think one of the, biggest problems we're having in elementary right now. I mean, most people you talk to, I'll be quick. Okay. Most people you talk to, I mean, they're, the high schools make sense to them. But we started talking about the elementary so late that I think people are struggling with that a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that's why you're seeing some resistance about having, I mean, you're absolutely right. Economically, that makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. Mentally right now, I just don't know that we're there. And we have kicked around the idea of maybe we just don't do anything with the elementary right now. I mean, just it's not the probably the best option financially because we do have an an opportunity here, but we're just we haven't put in the time to in the elementary so, that we probably should. Have. So, what would you do with like the Gilbert campus or this campus? What would you do? Just I mean, I mean, how do you what do you how do you figure that out? And that's why I said we just we haven't put in that time to. Okay. Who's the Wait, we? Who's we? Who's we, Jeff? The we, the, you keep saying we. And the school board. That's and the first I've heard that you might not do anything with the elementaries. I've been following these task forces more closely than anybody. But I'm not that, saying that we're not. Doing well, I just don't know who the we is here all the time. But I think that um, I, I think that we have to do something with the elementaries, mm -hmm. and I think the people are saying that we have to do something with the elementaries, mm -hmm. and I think the survey said what the people would like to see happen and mm -hmm. i know there's you know there's people that say that you know that's not valid or whatever the case may be then it it all comes down to that public vote it comes down to a ballot vote yeah. and that's right and so people people have to be given the option to come on out and vote for whatever they think is right and and we go with what they they vote but one option you never had was on a renovation which I brought that up at the very beginning when we first started this. But I think we, 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 we have should give about that. We should give the constituents two, two choices. It's going to cost this much to the renovate, it's going to cost this much to build. But I think and, we have had that conversation in, in this. Yeah, but we haven't had a good professional firm go through our bills. We're going out here, say again, it's still from these other things. There's dollars of figures being thrown out there that are not substantiated as far as I'm concerned. Until you run a complete mm -hmm. survey on us. Just one yeah. very quick question. 
would the money the IEEE pays is considering change if the elementary, and I'm not advocating that yeah. we don't do something with no. the elementary, but that would still be there. Yeah. Probably not the same amount because that the 164 amount? and 160 or 85 the, the is different. The amount that they contribute is not going to change. For the collaborative uh, yeah. junior high and senior high, basically. Yeah. Okay. We'll discuss this at the next, but I just want to say one thing. Uh, I came in, Brandy asked me about the recording of the meeting. Did you? I think we're that off, we're off topic, to yeah. Okay. I think that needs to be added on the okay. agenda. I guess I was, oh no, all right, okay. You can add that, okay? You can. You can ask board chair. Okay. All right, take a break.